Welcome to this installment of Short History Inquiries. Today we're going to be looking at the question of how did Simon de Montfort change the way England was ruled? Now our story starts off with King John I, a typical medieval king who began his reign in 1199 after the death of his older brother Richard. Now King John was a typical medieval king in that he believed he could do whatever he wanted, including taking everyone's money through taxes, starting wars despite the fact that he had lost so much land and it was so expensive, and punishing whoever he wanted for whatever crime he said that they had committed, even if he couldn't prove that they were guilty. Now, by 1215, the barons of England were fed up with King John and they decided to rebel against him. Now, John did not have the support to stop the barons and was forced to sign a document called the Magna Carta at a place called Runny Mead in June 1215. Now, this document essentially said that John had to do what the barons told him to do. And it said that the barons could only be taxed from John if they decided to agree to it, and that the barons could not be arrested without a fair trial. So this way, John could not go around arresting whoever he wanted. Now, John is not happy about this because he's the king, and he believes that God has put him in this position to do whatever he wants. Now, Fighting soon starts off again, shortly after John has already agreed to sign the Magna Carta, which means he's going back on his word. But lucky for the barons, John dies suddenly in 1216 and John's young son Henry becomes king. Now Henry was only nine years old at the time, so the barons are quick to take control of Henry and to make him sign the Magna Carta because he can't do anything about it because he's only nine years old. Now, by the 1230s, Henry has grown up a little bit and he starts to rule a little bit like his father, which is making the barons very angry. Now, Henry has gotten into a lot of debt, which means he owes a lot of money. And the barons don't like this because that means he starts taking all their money. He has also started wars with Wales and Europe, which is again bad for the barons because it is going to cost a lot of money. And lastly, he has started showing a lot of favouritism to his relatives in France over the barons. That means his relatives in France are the ones getting all the good bits of land and all the big bits of power. Now, by 1258, the barons are fed up and in steps a man called Simon de Montfort to help them. Now, the Montfort meets with a group of barons at Oxford to decide what to do with the king. And here they create a document called the Provisions of Oxford. And in the Provisions of Oxford, it says that a council of 15 members, so 15 barons, would meet three times a year to advise the king. And essentially, it's a little bit like the Magna Carta in that the king has to do what the barons say and that he can't get away with doing whatever he wants or the barons are going to rebel. Now, Henry is forced to agree to this. This is the second time Henry is forced to agree to a document that he doesn't want to sign. And this meeting is known as the First English Parliament. So as you probably know now, a parliament is the group of people that decides our laws and meets together to decide on certain very important things. In 1258, the first English parliament is set up by Simon de Montfort to tell the king what he is and isn't allowed to do. Now, again, just like his father John, Henry tries to get out of the oath that he's made. And Simon de Montfort is true to his word and leads a rebellion against Henry, known as the Second Barons' War. Now, in this war, Henry is defeated and he is thrown in jail. Now, Henry is allowed to still be king in title, but the Council of 15 are the ones that now rule England. Now, in 1265, in order to avoid other people in the country to get upset with the fact that this council rules England, 
Simon de Montfort decides to set up his great parliament. Now this time he decides to invite people from all around the country. So he invites knights and powerful representatives from each town. And this is again, it's to stop people from getting angry at the barons for having his power. But unfortunately for Simon de Montfort, he starts acting too much like a king and this makes the barons very, very angry. After all, why should he get all this power when they're the ones that helped him as well? Now, this means that in 1265, the barons do not like Simon de Montfort. They think he's a traitor and, he hates, and they hate him. And they hate him so much that at the first sign of trouble, they take off. This meant that later in 1265, King Henry's son, Prince Edward, is able to kill the Montfort at the Battle of Evesham. So, Simon de Montfort dies. But how did he change the way that Inglewood was ruled? And how significant is Simon de Montfort? Now, we can look at this in two ways, in terms of significance. How significant was he at the time? And how significant were the changes that he made now? Well, at the time, he's the, setting up the first parliament. So a group of people to help decide how the country is run, is run and how the king gets to rule his country. And this means that the king is held accountable. Now, yes, the Magna Carta was signed in 1215, but you've got to remember the Magna Carta wasn't really listened to by the kings. And it is this parliament and the setting up of parliament that means that the country is held accountable by more than just a king and it's held accountable to a series of representatives from all of the country. But how is it significant now? Well, this is really simple. We still have a parliament today who decides what our laws will be and how the country is run. So how did Simon de Montfort change the way England was ruled and how is it significant? You can probably have a go at answering that question for yourself. Thank you for listening to this week's instalment of History Inquiries. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope that you listen to the next one.